Hi, my name is Kmot. This podcast is brought to you by Majuwa Tivet College, and it specifically relates to income tax and six for South African Tivet Colleges. This presentation is a continuation of the calculation of tax liability for natural persons. And for ease of reference, I'd like to refer to this presentation as exempt income part two. In part one, I specifically dealt with the calculation of gross income. And I looked at the question paper, which was written in November 2016. I specifically looked at question four, and I actually used the Excel spreadsheet to illustrate the calculation of gross income. I'm going to continue using the spreadsheet to illustrate the calculation of exempt income. Without wasting your time, I'd like us to go to the question paper. That's the given information, just quickly, it related to termination of tax liability for the year ended 28 February 2015 for Tipto, who's aged 55. We have already taken certain amount into consideration in the determination of gross income. As I've mentioned, specifically for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to focus only on exempt income. Just important uh, aspects and principles relating to exempt income is that exempt income are contained in Section 10 of the South African Income Tax Act. If you're in doubt as to whether an amount is exempt or not, you need to refer to Section 10 of the South African Income Tax Act. Your textbooks, in fact, all uh, income tax textbooks, contain uh, Section 10. For the purpose of our studies, there are two uh, basic uh, exempt income. And these two exempt income are highly examinable. And those uh, two items are interest received. There you go, interest received. I just quickly want to highlight that in yellow. Can we get the highlighter? There you go. That's interest received. And dividends received. Remember, I didn't flip a coin in determining whether those two items are exempt, but I referred to Section 10 of the South African Income Tax Act. Without wasting your time, I'd like us to establish principles that we're going to take into account in establishing the exemption. Firstly, I want us to deal with interest received exemption. As I've already mentioned, interest is exempt in terms of section 101i of the Income Tax Act. The exemption is granted to natural persons only and it's not applicable to juristic persons. Juristic persons are companies and close corporations. I'm a natural person and you also a natural person. Remember, this exemption, it's age-driven. Um, the Section 101i clearly makes a distinction between two age categories for the exemption. One exemption relates to taxpayers that are less than 65 years, and the exemption is 23,800. And the other age category refers to taxpayers that are 65 years or more, and they granted the exemption of 34,500. So essentially, when you're dealing with this exemption, first thing you need to determine whether the amount of interest was taken into account in determination of uh, gross income. And then when you go to exemptions, you need to determine whether the exemption that you're dealing with relates to a taxpayer who is 60, who's less than 65, or 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 65 years or more. In that case, you'll be able to determine the appropriate limit based on the age category. Without wasting your time, let's go make it applicable. Okay, I'd like us to go to the Excel spreadsheet quickly. Remember, the certain cells are pre-populated because I already discussed those calculations in part one and the determination of gross income. So those are pre-populated. Please follow part one to determine how those amounts were calculated. 
I'm going to highlight the two items that are exempt. That's interest received. I'm just going to use yellow dividends. Those two items are exempt. Firstly, let's tackle dividends received. As we've already tackled the principles relating, let's tackle interest received as we've already tackled the principles relating to interest received exemption. As I've already mentioned, it's age-driven. Tiptoe is 55 years. Tiptoe would have been entitled to the exemption of uh, 23,800. However, Tiptoe only received 14,000. Therefore, his uh, limitation of uh, interest exemption will be limited to 14,000. I'm just going to quickly write there, 14,000. There you go. Just one thing I need to emphasize is if, let's say, uh, the interest received of Tiptoe was um, 40,000 for argument's sake. We're going to limit that amount to 23,800 as uh, the exemption shouldn't at any stage exceed uh, 23,800. And the exemption shouldn't also receive, exceed the actual amount received by the taxpayer. I like to go to dividends received. Dividends received is also exempt. Uh, it's exempt in terms of Section 10.1K of the South African Income Tax Act. The exemption is granted to all taxpayers, uh, that is, natural persons and juristic persons. So this is not age driven because it's also granted to juristic persons. The exemption is only applicable to South African local dividends. So if it's foreign dividend, you might have to consult other sections. But I'd like us to limit this to South African local uh, dividend. This is a full exemption as opposed to a partial exemption. The interest received is an example of a partial exemption because there are limits based on the age category of a taxpayer. But this dividends received exemption, it's a full exemption. Um, therefore, an amount that was included in gross income of a specific taxpayer relating to dividends, it will be fully exempt if it relates to a South African uh, dividends. Let's quickly go make it applicable. There you go. Um, that's the dividend from public companies. Can we please assume that this relates to a local uh, company? If it's not clearly specified, let's assume. Had they said foreign dividends, we're not going to apply this uh, exemption in terms of Section 101K because 101K only exempts uh, South African uh, dividends. However, if it's not specified, let's assume that it relates to uh, South African local dividends. As you would remember, the, the dividends that was taxable in the hands of uh, Tiptoe was 2,500. Remember, we had to divide that by two because Tiptoe is married in community of property. Therefore, we're going to exempt 2,500. As 2,500 appears under Tiptoe's uh, uh, gross income. So there you go. So your total exemptions came to that amount. Allow me to highlight in yellow so that you can follow. It came to that amount. Essentially, we're going to take your gross income. We're going to deduct uh, your total exemptions of 16,500 to get to income as defined by the Income Tax Act. And the amount is... 155400. Um, thank you. In the next presentation, I'm going to tackle permissible deductions or, or, or any other deductions that might not be permissible as well. Thank you.